you forget that every second breath you take comes from the ocean. So more than 50% of the oxygen we breathe comes from the ocean. That's one important fact to keep in mind. And another thing is that the ocean is soaking up a lot of that extra carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that we're spewing up into the air to burning of fossil fuels. If it wasn't for the ocean, climate change would be much worse because of higher CO2 uh, concentrations in the atmosphere. So when you make people aware of these things, you turn them into ocean literate citizens, they obviously, you know, start changing their mindset and also their behavior and way of life to try to, to become change themselves, to, to bring about change themselves. Uh, here in Malta, one tool which I found to be really uh, um, effective is citizen science. So basically asking and training, you know, and engaging with stakeholders. Uh, stakeholders, broad array of stakeholders, could be people using boats, could be divers, could be snorkelers, could be people, beachgoers, anybody, you know, on an island obviously could be a stakeholder, to actually engage with them to pro uh, acquire scientific data about the sea. So in that way, you are acquiring the scientific data, but the person sending you the report is getting something in return, because they're getting a greater awareness about the sea, you know, they're getting this informal education. And you would be amazed about how popular citizen science campaigns are. They're really popular, they really manage to inspire people. So much so that nowadays many European institutions are actually looking towards citizen science as a way to bridge what we call the emotional deficit. At the Mission Starfish, we actually, you know, identified the emotional deficit as one of the greatest obstacles to uh, inspiring people about the ocean. People still feel detached about the ocean.